Winning games in Football Manager certainly isn't an easy feat, and there's plenty of things that you can do to increase your chances of winning that game. In today's video, I'll be covering five quick things you can do to give yourself the edge, to give yourself that fine margin to get the victories in your FM save. Hi everyone, Jake here for FM Scout. Welcome to today's video where I'll be showing you how to win more in Football Manager. And I do air quotes because obviously it's not just a simple do this and you win every single game. FM doesn't work like that. It's intricate. There's details to it. But today I'll be giving you five quick tips to help you win more games in FM 23, particularly focusing in on those slight tweaks that you can make before the game and in game to give you the advantage. Before we get into all of the tips though, I'm going to ask you guys Guys, to smash the like button for us as always you legends always show your support and we really appreciate it and I'd also ask if you think I've missed a specific tip or thing you can do to give yourself an edge in game then put it in the comments so people after watching this can scroll down and get some more ideas from the comments too subscribe if you haven't already as we push 160k subscribers and let's get into it shall we we are here in my Aberdeen save which you can find on my channel linked in the description down below and you can see we win in the majority of our matches, including this season, a few Champions League games against some opposition that are way better than us. And there's plenty of reasons for this that I won't cover in this video, like scouting, the tactics that we use, the players that we've bought in, all of those things we've covered in separate videos. And as mentioned, we're not going to cover those broader topics today, instead focusing in on some quick tips that you can do. But I can tell you, I do the majority of these tips in this save, and it's certainly been a factor in getting us this kind of record of wins not just this season but last season and the season before that you can see we have been a very dominant side again the tactics and the players that we have clearly are the defining factor behind that success but there's plenty of other reasons and things that we're doing to help out also now if you do want to check out this series as mentioned it is on my channel linked in the description down below we also have some one-off rebuilds over there as well as some wonder kid videos in the form of youtube shorts where we quickly highlight some wonder kids that you might not have heard of. But even though I'm showing you five things today, I kind of wanted to give you a little bonus one that's quite obvious, so I'm not going to use it as one of the tips, but it's something that I think is key to our success, and I'd really suggest that you do, and it's all about player rotation. We've just came off of a match against Borussia Dortmund, and we have good depth in our squad amongst every position. Now, it'd be easy to go, oh, well, I want to win every single game, so I'm always going to use my best players. Rotate your squad. The fresher your players are, the better they're going to perform. You'll also keep everyone happy. So I'm pretty certain if I was going into our next game, which is what? A more winnable game against Hearts in the Cup. We've just played Dortmund in the Champions League. We put our best squad out there. A few days later, we're playing Hearts. So I'm going to put our rotation team out that would look something like this. Obviously, this isn't the most perfect squad we could have, but it's more than capable of getting us a win. And by the time match day comes around, all of these guys will have a green for condition. They'll be ready to play. And whilst they're playing, we're letting our other guys get a rest, giving everyone game time. And I'd also suggest to make full use of your substitutes in game. Make sure if you've got five subs in your league, use five subs. If you've got three subs in your league, use three subs. Just make sure you're giving as many players game time, rest in others when you can. Obviously, if you're one nil down, chasing in the game don't take off your best players but if you can it's always a good idea to rotate to keep players fit keep them fresh and I think that plays a massive factor in our success in this save but we'll call that our little bonus tip and now we'll get on to the first thing you can do to give yourself an extra advantage before a match how to win more in FM23 well firstly we're going to be looking at playing ahead against your next opposition if you go to the data hub and then go to this section here next opponent even if you're not someone who uses the data hub regularly you can get some great information here that can give you an edge in a match now if you're a dominant team like we are with this Aberdeen side in this save in a match against Hearts to be honest I'm probably not going to look at this kind of thing I probably should but I like to think that we can play our game and dominate teams no matter what really 
But when we come up against Dortmund, like we did in the Champions League or Atletico Madrid or Tottenham, we have to be a bit more precise in the way that we play, learn about our team's weaknesses, their flaws, their strengths, and go from there. And this next opponent section is really useful for that. Not only will it give their expected tactical style, their expected tactic, you can get plenty of information from the graphs on this screen here to see where you're more dominant over a team or whatever it may be. But if we go to the analyst report, I always vouch for this when it comes to a big game. I think it's really really useful in finding some things that you can do to tweak your side's game. For example, we can see Owen Evans here loses possession more than any other player on his team, so it might be a good idea to try and press him and close him down in the hopes of making him a weak link. You can see they score 38% of their goals from crosses, and particularly they often come from the left wing, so I'd be asking our players to close down their left winger more regularly and prevent the cross. Whatever it might be, we can get some information from here for sure and tweak our game plan in our tactic. And the way that you can make those tweaks is just to add an extra tactic slot here, click copy, and it will come up with your exact same tactic but you can maybe make a few extra tweaks so for example we remembered their left winger was playing in a lot of crosses so we can ask for our wing back here possibly to mark a specific player or mark a specific position to make sure that we can prevent those assists and from all of that information we might be able to give ourselves an edge even if it's closing down one extra cross than you might have before that cross might have led to a goal might lead you to losing and it's always a good idea to check that out particularly in the important games now there's a brilliant channel called the manager's seat where they've made a video really, really detailing how you can prepare using opposition instructions. It's 20 minutes long or so, really detailed. And I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you want to get into the nitty gritty details of how to do it, how to look at an opposition and tweak your tactic ready for them. But we've covered a slight overview of it here. Tip number one, analyze your opposition and make tweaks accordingly. The next tip is particularly handy if you're coming up to an important game. I wouldn't do this every time, but it's something you can do before big matches to give yourself an edge. I've spoke about it in plenty of videos, but still people don't seem to do it very often. So we'll cover it very briefly here. It's to praise your players and keep their morale up. So if we go to the dynamic section, you can see we've got a great atmosphere at the club. We've got really good managerial support and team cohesion. Everyone's happy here pretty much at Aberdeen and that really helps us in our game. But before a big match, an easy way to help support your players and get them ready for the game is to go over to them. Let's take Mike Wilson, for example, here and praise them. Maybe it's based on his recent performances, maybe as training, but only do that if they've actually trained well or played well. If you do this too often or do it at the wrong times, players can actually take it negatively. But one thing that I found that's really simple to do is the praise conduct button. Again, one that I've spoke about loads of times before. If you go onto that, hit praise conduct. I've never really seen it have a bad effect. It will either have no effect or a slight increase into a player's morale. All we're saying is basically they're not being an idiot around the club. They're turning up to matches. They're turning up to training as all players should be expected to be. So unless he was like missing training, going out clubbing, whatever it might be, then you're pretty safe to actually go ahead and praise their conduct. We'll do it here to Mike Wilson. His morale was already at maximum and it's not going to affect everyone, but sometimes you can get an increase. Let's try Patrick Volomark here. He's not particularly happy. If we go and praise his conduct, does it have an increase? Not really on him. But again, if you kept doing this to all of your players, you might find two or three of them get an increase in their morale and that might be able to give you the edge in your game. There you go. I've just tried it on my third player now, Leighton Clarkson. His morale has gone from an arrow being like here now to full, happy morale. I don't know the exact words for the locations of those arrows, but you can see it's gone upwards and that's good. His morale is increased. That's going to mean that he'll play better. So try and look at your player's morale. Make sure that you've got happy players playing when possible. And if you can, praise their conduct before a big game. Chances are three, four players in your team, including your subs, might get a benefit from it and go into that game with a higher standard of morale. For tip number three, this is one where you don't have to be a tactical genius. Again, I usually just delegate this unless it's a really important match, then maybe you want to get involved, but maybe you want to do this for every single game. Depends what stage of your save you're at. For us, we're at a stage now when we win most of our matches without all of these tweaks, but particularly at the start of my save, we were really struggling and these kind of things really helped us. And what I'm talking about here is the opposition instructions, which sometimes I'll delegate and sometimes I'll do myself. Now you saw earlier that we were tweaking our right back to say, I'll go and close down their winger more often to try and prevent the cross. Obviously, that's great and can help us. But if we do go over to our opposition instructions, we can add a few tweaks onto how our players are going to play against our next opponents 
to give us an edge. For example, let's take a look at one of their better players, Kwame Poku. We have a few choices of what we can do to him. We can mark him tighter. We can say never do that or always do that. Maybe they've got a really talented dribbler. You don't want to press him because he's just going to bypass your team. Or maybe he's really poor on the ball and you want to press them. Obviously, all of the analysis that we did earlier will definitely help you with this. Maybe you want to go in hard on a certain player or maybe even put a player onto their weak foot. We remember that their left side was a place where they were getting loads of goals from crosses. We can take a look at him and see, okay, he's right footed. Ideally, we push him onto his left foot. So in that case, we can go here and say, push him onto his left foot, drive him down that byline. And hopefully then his crosses won't be as effective. Now, if you want to look into all of that and do it yourself, feel free. But very simply, you can apply all of these opposition instructions just by going up here, seeing what the assistant says and doing exactly what he wants. There you go. The assistant has put all of this on. He's saying he wants us to tackle Lewis Nelson hard. Clearly, he's got a grudge against him. He also wants to tackle most of our attackers harder and he wants to trigger the press on Connor Ronan. So there you go. We've got some extra information there, hopefully to give us an edge. Now, if you didn't do it at this stage, usually when you get to match day, when you advance onto the match, it will actually come up with a little box. It says opposition instructions and you can click a button that says apply all and it will just put on all of your assistance recommendations before a game. If you're not going to do the opposition instructions yourself, I'd suggest at least doing that to give you an edge. But if you want to come in here and tweak things yourself based on the tactical knowledge that you've learned, then that's what you're paid to do as manager of your club and you're more than welcome to. Our assistant here wasn't bothered about forcing Oliveira here onto his left foot, but we know that that's something we want to do. So we're going to add that on to the opposition instructions and there you go. This can give us an extra edge before a game. Another thing you can do to give yourself an edge in the game is to create a few different tweaks of your tactic that you can run during a match. Now, I'm going to call them match plans, but they're not necessarily the match plans that the game thinks you're talking about. I don't tend to use this section at all. But what I'm speaking about here is if you only have one or two tactics and you have some free tactic slots, as I do right now, I've got two free ones. I'm going to make a copy of my tactic twice over, ready for, say, that big game against Borussia Dortmund. Now, I'm not going to completely revolutionize my tactics here and have one version of it where it's a five at the back, one where it's a 4 2 4. You could certainly do that if you have the time and you want to put in that much effort. But what I find is an easy thing that you can do to help your side win more games. It's to have a tactic when you really need to ramp things up and also when you want to bring things down. So in my second slot here, this is going to be my wind the game down kind of tactic. Maybe we're 60 minutes in, we're winning 2-0 and I just don't want players getting injured. We don't need to press as heavily and we want to calm things down and just make sure we're protecting our players and not going too aggressive with it. Obviously here you could maybe tweak the tactic. Maybe you want to bring some players back to make things easier, but you can make a few simple changes without having to go into that much detail which can help you even swapping from positive to just balanced but one that I really like to do is to lower the tempo I like to play really high tempo but obviously when you're winning a game you might want to slow the tempo down a little bit we also when we're out of possession might not want to press as heavily we can lower the trigger press down to standard we can maybe bring our lines down whatever you want to do you can have a tactic here to wind the game down a bit and protect your players which is going to keep their fitness up protect you from injuries and hopefully mean that you win more games and also it's about game management right managing the in-game situation slowing things down when you don't need to go crazy onto a team but also in that third slot I mentioned we were going to have a more aggressive version of a tactic maybe there's 15 minutes left on the clock and you need a goal again you could make a tactic where everybody's forward but then your players aren't going to learn it as well they're not going to be as familiar not going to play as well so I'm just going to do a few simple things for example we'll go from positive to maybe attacking in possession we might go slightly more direct in the last few minutes. We could maybe switch it so that we have a different role here. We might have a shadow striker or something to get up there alongside our attacker. You can see the familiarity has gone down, but not massively because it's not a huge variation in the tactic that we were playing before. And with these simple tweaks, you've got a few different plans ready for when the game comes about. You can see we've got one here that's much less intensive compared to this one, which is far more intensive than what we're playing with. And it's a real mix. You can manage the games better to particularly those big games, keep the fitness up, keep your players playing well and manage those minute details in the game to get you a win. The final thing that you can do to give yourself an edge in the game is something 
that a lot of us do. Maybe some of us do it without really thinking why we're doing it. And some people completely avoid it. And it's really just pointless to avoid it because it can give you so many edges. And that is your shouts in game, whether it be to your entire team or to individuals. Now, I'm not going to go in to every single shout, what it does, when to use it. We can make that video if you'd like. But very simply for me, there's two that I've been using this year and it seems to be working fine. Maybe you want to berate your players. Maybe you want to fire them up, focus, calm down, whatever it might be. I find those ones can be a bit hit and miss in terms of where they work. Maybe that's just my own personal opinion, but I seem to just stick to two simple ones that seem to work for me. The first is demand more, particularly if a team's losing, I'll demand more. If it's a draw, I'll find the individual players that aren't playing great. Let's say it was Mason Hancock here, Kozlowski and Odebert maybe were having a terrible game. I could demand more from them and see an increase hopefully in their body language. That might mean that they're playing better, ready to go and get us a win. In the same case, when our players are playing well, I do like to praise them, but I think you should be really careful with this. Often you'll praise your players even when they're winning and you'll see that their body language actually gets potentially worse sometimes and they'll go why are you praising me and it's basically because these players have a higher expectation of themselves I assume or maybe the game's just a bit buggy in the way that it works because if I was getting praised and my team was winning I'd be pretty happy but it doesn't always work like that let's just see if this ends up being a goal because we might be able to do a shout here and see how it affects us but what I was gonna say is praising I would only use that when you're two goals up or more. That seems to be the effective way to use it. The players seem to be happy then and they're happy to be praised. But sometimes when you only go one goal up and you praise them, they don't like it. Their body language suddenly changes. Couldn't tell you why. It just seems to be the way that the game works. But let's see who gets the goal here. Now, I haven't used any kind of tweet tactic that we spoke about earlier. I just jumped into the game to show you the shouts, basically. So don't worry too much about what happens here. This also isn't being saved for my save. This is just something that's happening off camera for a tutorial. This won't be actually saved in the series that I'm doing. But we haven't ended up scoring. Maybe after 25 minutes, look, this is the kind of game where I'd be wanting to be winning the match. Let's take a look at their body language. Currently, we've got a few motivated players and one, two, three, four, five, six composed players. I'm going to go ahead and demand more from the team because this is a game where we should be winning. I'm going to do that. I'm going to wait a few seconds. Now I'm going to go back. Now we've only got two players that are composed. We've got some motivated and some that are fired up and ready to go. So I'd say that's a success. There was only one negative in it all. And it was this Liam Morrison kid getting pressured by the feedback. But maybe that's because I'm playing him in a position where he's never played for us before in this save. And he's also very young. So maybe he's taking it on a little bit more than some of the others. But I would say that's a successful shout. It's fired our players up ready to go and it's just going to give you that little edge particularly over the next five or ten minutes and hopefully that's when you'll get a goal start playing better and you can see straight away it does seem like there's an increase in our impetus in the way that we're playing this might have happened even without the shout you can't really know but I certainly think it's played a part in it here we've gone close to scoring again and that's just a way that you can use shouts again demand more if you're losing the game or demand more on individual players if you're drawing and you think you should be winning do bear in mind as well if you are like the worst Worst team in your league and you're playing Manchester City let's say and it's 0-0 probably not worth demanding more from your players because that's not what's expected but if your team is expected to win I would demand more from them if they're not and when they're in front don't praise them until you've got two goals or more I'd say but there you go everyone that's some slight tweaks that you can make to hopefully help you win more games in FM23 even if you just do one or two of these things it's certainly going to improve your chances if you have got any use out of it smash the like button for us and subscribe for more make sure you let us know your tips in the comments and come check out my channel linked in the description down below if you want to see more of this Aberdeen save but most of all have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time thank you and goodbye